Hello! This video will teach you the fundamentals of pistons and slime blocks so that you'll be able to build your own flying machines in Minecraft Snapshot 2014 Week 18A. I am going to start simple, but this is going to move very quickly, so let's go ahead and get started. When powered, a piston can push a block that's directly in front of it. In fact, a piston can push a row of up to 12 blocks. But if we try to push more than 12 in a row, then activating the piston does nothing. In addition to normal pistons, there are also sticky pistons, which behave similar to normal pistons. However, when the piston retracts, it will pull back whichever block it's holding onto. Normally, powering a piston will only push the blocks that are directly in front of the piston. Here, the pink and blue blocks have not moved, only the white ones have. However, in the latest snapshot, slime blocks were changed to stick to other blocks. So if we power a piston and push it, any blocks adjacent to the slime blocks will also get pushed along. This enables us to move complex structures with a single piston. Here, I've pushed most of these blocks up. Additionally, if we replace that piston with a sticky piston, we can also grab the structure and move it back down. In this example, notice that the red block does not move along with the rest of the blocks. This is because it's not connected via sticky slime blocks to the rest of the movement. Let's formulate a more precise definition of exactly which blocks will move. Let's invent a new term. An energized slime block is a slime block that will stick to other blocks while being moved by a piston. Now let's precisely define which slime blocks are energized. Any slime blocks that are in the original row of the piston will be energized slime blocks. Furthermore, any slime blocks that are continuously connected to other energized slime blocks will themselves be energized slime blocks. Let's do some examples to make sure we understand the definition and piston behavior. Right now, the gray blocks over here move up and down because they are connected to energized slime blocks. If I replace a slime block there with a non-slime block, then you will see that these portions no longer moved because these slime blocks are no longer energized. These slime blocks are still energized because they're in the original row of the piston. However, these are not because they are no longer contiguously connected to energized slime blocks. If I add a slime block here, you can probably guess what will happen. Now all of these move together once again because via this connection, all of these slime blocks have become energized and as a result, move together with the piston. The 12 block piston pushing limit still applies. With this setup, I'm currently moving 12 blocks. If I add a 13th somewhere stuck to one of the sticky slime blocks and try to move it again, it no longer moves. Now I would need to push 13 blocks according to the rules, and pistons can't push that much. It's worth noting that energized slime blocks can happen in all three dimensions. Here I've added some slime blocks coming out toward us. Here's an interesting example that bears some explaining. Notice that we have a slime block next to blue, next to red, above this white wool block. Did you see what happened? When this slime block on top was originally pushed by the sticky piston, it was in the original row of pushed blocks and therefore became energized. It, as a result, was able to grab the blue block and bring the blue block up. However, when the sticky piston retracts, it does not energize all the blocks in the row. It only energizes the slime block that it's grabbing that's directly adjacent to the sticky piston. As a result, these blocks became energized and pulled these two back down, but this was left floating. Let's talk about pistons. Pistons interact with redstone in interesting ways. They can be powered from below or from the sides or from the back, or from the top, but not from the front. Additionally, 
pistons can be powered from diagonally above. However, until there is a block update, that is some block changing next to them, they don't actually notice that they are being powered. Similarly, redstone power two blocks directly above a piston will also power the piston, but once again, the piston won't notice until there's a block update. Pistons also don't notice the removal of such diagonal or above power until there's another block update. A device that notices block updates is called a block update detector, or BUD switch for short. With sticky pistons and slime blocks, it's very easy to build a BUD switch, such as this one. Now let's take a look at a particular structure that I find very practical and useful for constructing flying machines. I like to call these three blocks the fundamental unit of leverage. We have a normal piston, a slime block, and a redstone block like this. And if I push this piston forward, it then pushes the slime block and redstone block forward because this piston gets powered diagonally via this redstone block. And furthermore, I can do it again, and I can do it again, ad infinitum. So long as I can push this piston forward, it will then push this thing forward. I've dubbed this the fundamental unit of leverage because it helps us overcome the 12 block limit of piston pushing. Here, I'm getting close to having pressed 12 blocks forward. Nevertheless, if I want to press more blocks, I can simply start making a slime structure after the fundamental unit of leverage, and I get a whole bunch more blocks that I can press forward. This piston presses this one, which then presses this new structure, which has a new 12 block limit. And furthermore, we can repeat the same structure to keep pressing forward even further. If I add another fundamental unit of leverage, then pushing from way back here, We'll push this thing forward, which will then push this thing forward, and I've got another 10 blocks of slime blocks that I can play with to continue extending the structure. Now that we know about the fundamental unit of leverage, let's put it to use to build an actual flying machine. This is a flying machine that I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate right here. And so let's take a look at how it works. We have a fundamental unit of leverage right here. Whenever this piston gets moved forward, it will push this structure forward, which is connected to this piston, which moves forward into another fundamental unit of leverage, pushing this structure forward, which then pushes into this piston, which is then prepared to press this structure forward, and the whole cycle repeats through three different pistons. Note also the way that I can start and stop this particular device. I'm going to invent a couple new terms here called overweighting and underweighting. Recall that a piston can only push 12 blocks. Right now, the structure that this piston right here needs to push has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks. As a result, if there's a block update, this guy is currently being powered diagonally, he will be able to push this structure as we can see here. However, if I add any more weight to the system, if I add another wool block, for example, now that wool block will try to be dragged along, but now we have 13 blocks along this arc. As a result, this piston is no longer capable of pushing this section. I call this stopping technique overweighting. By adding additional weight, more than 12 blocks, the pistons are no longer strong enough to push, and as a result, the mechanism stops. I've overweighted the system. In contrast, when I remove a block that makes the system too heavy to push, I call that underweighting. I can underweight the system to bring it back below the limit so that our machine can move forward once again. Here is an interesting flying machine. Let's take a look at it in a little bit more depth. I'd added some extra blocks here just to overweight the system to make it easier to stop. Let's take a more careful look. There are three pistons. This piston right here is already powered diagonally via this redstone block. 
As a result, once it gets updated, it's going to push this structure, which will do two things. It will move the redstone block forward, unpowering this piston and this piston two blocks below. And it will move this piston forward on top of a redstone block. This piston thus will become powered and push this segment here, which includes these blocks, oops, including the redstone, as well as the piston that's on top of here, which is then going to move forward, and this piston, which is also going to move forward. When these pistons move forward, they get back into their powered positions of being powered by this redstone block. This one gets a block update as a result of moving and will move its extended arm up, which will give this piston a block update, and the cycle starts once again. Let's watch the whole thing in action. Here I have the same machine as before, with some extra blocks on the tail to help overweight it, and I want to apply the fundamental unit of leverage in order to make it possible for this thing to push another structure. And so I'll put a fundamental unit of leverage there, and then on this separate portion over here, I'll also add a fundamental unit of leverage. And now I'm going to have a machine that in addition to moving forward, can push two other pieces that could be attached to this slime block and this slime block. Let's watch it work. Whoops, I've overweighted it. And there it goes. We're now pushing two extra pieces of cargo with our flying machine. Now we're ready to talk about my thought process for creating a multi-directional, steerable flying machine. Here, once again, is the flying machine that we saw before, in a slightly different state than usual. And here is another copy of that flying machine. Let me break a couple of blocks to make it more obvious that this is a copy of that flying machine. It's actually kind of a mirror image that's been rotated. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to have one of the flying machines push the other flying machine. Down here, I've replaced a redstone block with red wool just to make it so that this flying machine is not going to start flying in this direction. But now this flying machine will fly in this direction when activated. And thanks to this little strut, which will push the bottom half, and this fundamental unit of leverage over here, which is connected to the top half, both halves of the flying machine that could go this way will get pushed this way by the original machine. And so let's watch that in action. So basically, we found a way to have one flying machine carry another flying machine along as a piece of cargo. Hold on to your hats. Here's another idea that I was working with. There's a lot happening here, so let's try to break it down. It turns out that this tiny guy is a flying machine. This piston right here is sticky, but the other two pistons are non-sticky pistons. And as you can see, once again, this creates a flying machine. Let me see if I can overweight it to stop it. There we go. The logic of this one goes like this. This guy is already diagonally powered, and so he is going to try to push forward. He's going to push these four blocks forward, including the fundamental unit of leverage, which will then move this forward. When this piston is going in and then retracting, it's going to cause a block update on the sticky piston, which has been sitting here after being pushed, but is currently being powered diagonally via this block. And so the block update causes the sticky piston to push this slime block out, grabbing the normal piston and pulling it back forward. And so as a result, the whole structure moves forward. Let's watch it again. The idea I had with this previous machine then was to take the simple device we saw before, which once again is right here, and try to put another one of them going in a different direction. You can see it right here under the cursor. And then have one of them be able to push the other in another direction. And in order to do that, I had to add a lot of extra scaffolding or struts as I like to call them. 
where basically we could leverage a fundamental unit of leverage to push the whole device over in a direction. And so basically this one moves forward, it pushes on this big strut, which then is able to push on this machine, and this side pushes on this other strut. And the idea I had was kind of to have four of them going around in a circle, but it wasn't really working out. And so I ended up going with a different idea. And so we're finally back to here, the machine I showed off in my previous video over here near Jeff Bridges. And there's a bit of complications in terms of trying to have the survival feature of having a person be able to sit and actually ride the machine with the boats. But I'm going to tear away most of those parts so that we can just see the essence of the machine. Here it is boiled down to its essence. At the very core, we have the same simple machine that we saw that can push in this direction. We have another copy of that machine right here that can push in this direction. Both of them are sharing the same fundamental unit of leverage block right over here. So they're pushing kind of orthogonally against each other onto this one area. And both are connected to each other via a series of struts. This one pushes this way, which has a fundamental unit of leverage, which can push this entire structure this way. And this one is connected via this little strut over here to push this guy completely to the right over here. And rather than using a fundamental unit of leverage, where we have a piston, then air, then slime and a redstone block above, this uses another technique that we saw before, where we have a piston and air and a slime block that's connected to redstone below. And I needed to kind of go in both directions, above and below, in order to kind of fit this into this tiny bit where they could push each other in two different directions. In any case, Right now, this one is powered because he has a redstone block here. This one is not powered because he doesn't have a redstone block here. And so if I go ahead and make a block update, it starts flying off in this direction. And we can see this guy is pushing the whole other structure of this guy. If I want to stop it, I can simply overweight it by adding a block. I can then break the block. We've stopped it. And now if I want to switch directions, I can break, uh, break this redstone block and place it here instead. And now power will cause it to run in this direction. So let's go ahead and start it up again with a block update. And now the machine, as you can see, travels in this direction. And this guy managed to push this whole guy as he's going along. And once again, when it needs to stop, we can simply overweight the machine and it gets stopped back into a good state. The only bits that were left were to add the boat here so I could sit here while it's moving this way. And since we have a fundamental unit of leverage and we've got two blocks here, but we have 10 more blocks we could play with, I ended up putting another little platform over here for a boat to sit on so that I could sit in a boat when I was moving this direction as well. And that was the whole idea behind the flying machine that could be steered in two different directions. There's lots more that one can do with pistons and slime blocks. In this video, we focused on flying machines. I hope that you found it informative and useful, and that it will be inspiring for you so that you might make some of your own creations. My name is Dr. Brian Lorgon 111 and I have a lot of other video series, including both Let's Plays, as well as tutorials and command block inventions and different things. So I'd encourage you to check out some of my other series on the channel and subscribe for more information if you would like to see some more videos from me. I hope, as always, that you guys are having a great day, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.